Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today is part four in this series where I review all of the questions about my beauty routines and my beauty secrets that I am asked the absolute most. Let's just jump right into it. How often do I get a trim? This is fitting because I just got a trim yesterday. I got my layers touched up brought up shorter, which I love because I want to have it when like my hair is pulled back and I can have shorter pieces like that. I just think it's so cute. And then I just got a little bit of a trim off of the ends, which is something that I do once every three to four weeks. My stylist recommended that I come back in in 10 weeks just to maintain the layers that I have here. But in terms of getting a trim, once every three to four months is something that I feel like I've been doing for the past few years. What I will say about that is I don't think there is a one size fits all for how often you should be getting a trim. I feel like I see a lot of things on social media, like you have to be getting a trim every eight weeks or every six weeks or every 10, 12, whatever number of weeks. And the truth is that there's no one right answer for everybody. I do agree that it's important to get your dead ends cut off, but also I don't think that you need to be getting your hair cut too, too often because I'll that's going to do is prevent it from growing to the length that you want it to. Do I still double shampoo when I'm using a clarifying shampoo? And if so, do I do that every wash? Yes, every time I'm shampooing, regardless of the type of shampoo that I'm using, I am always shampooing twice. So getting my hair nice and wet, lathering that shampoo up, applying it, rinsing it, and then repeating the process one more time. And I also do that every single time that I wash. So you can both double shampoo and use a clarifying shampoo every time you wash if you would like to. Similar to what I just said about getting a trim, there's no one right answer that's going to be the best for everybody. For some people, they'll find that using a clarifying shampoo every wash is just something that's a little bit too drying for their scalp. But for other people, specifically those that have a really oily scalp, using a clarifying shampoo and double shampooing with that every single wash may be just what they need. What are my all-time favorite drugstore sunscreens? I absolutely love La Roche-Posay sunscreens. I feel like if I had to pick a brand from the drugstore that made my favorite untinted sunscreens, it would be them. My all-time favorite from them is the Anthelios AOX sunscreen. This is incredible, so lightweight and liquidy. And an option that's really nice for the winter time is their melt-in milk sunscreen because it's velvety, a little thicker, more moisturizing. Both of these are beautiful. For tinted sunscreens, my current favorite is the Neutrogena Pure Screen Mineral UV Tint. This is very liquidy and runny and it gives you a really nice glowy finish. And I love that it comes in four shades. I did post a tinted drugstore sunscreen showdown a few months ago now, so I'll list that in the description box below if you haven't seen that video yet. I not only show you this sunscreen in action, so hand swatches, application footage, but I compare it to a ton of other drugstore tinted sunscreens so that you can figure out which is the best fit for you. What do I get done to my nails and how do I recommend finding a good nail artist? So they're a bit grown out right now, but what I have been getting done to my nails for the past several months now, what's it called again? I had to literally look at my nail artist website because I couldn't remember. It's a structured gel manicure slash builder in a bottle, which is also referred to as hard gel, I believe. So it's different from a traditional gel manicure. I have been absolutely loving getting that done. I don't have plans to stop doing that anytime soon. I just find that it really helps me to not bite my nails because I've been a habitual nail biter for my entire life. It is seriously the grossest habit ever. I hate it. I have tried several times to stop but it's so hard because most of the time I don't even realize that I'm doing it. It's like a mindless thing. And then whenever I get myself to stop biting my nails, I just rip them off. So either way, I'm not the best when it comes to having natural nails. I've gone through periods where I'm able to grow them long and I'm like, oh my God, I'm never getting fake nails again. And then something happens that stresses me out and I sit and pick and break my nails. It's just the worst. So one day, maybe I'll be able to shake the habit, but until then I have been loving getting my nails done. My nail artist is amazing. I will list her Instagram in the description box of my videos, but she is very difficult to get into because she is an independent nail artist. And that's definitely my top recommendation for finding a really good nail artist. So what I would recommend is searching for an independent nail artist near you who does things like a structured gel manicure, builder in a bottle, hard gel, etc. I have tried to go to a lot of traditional nail salons near me and they do not do these same kinds of nail techniques. They pretty much only do regular traditional gel or acrylic. 
Netflix. So it's hard to find them for sure. And when you find a really good one, they tend to book up quickly, but that's what I would recommend. Do I ever do a K18 reset and use it six times in a row again? So if you're not really familiar with the whole K18 process or what this question is referring to exactly, K18 is supposed to be used for six consecutive washes when you first start using it. That is what is supposed to kind of do like the initial healing on your hair, the initial repair. After that, you can use it as needed. So I will typically use it once every three to four weeks. Since the product launched and they had all their information on their website, they have since updated it to suggest that you do a reset after every coloring treatment. I never realized that they updated that guidance until I got so many of these questions that I reached out to them and asked and they were like, yep, that's what we recommend doing. That's what's on our website. I was like, since when? So now for my past one to two coloring sessions, I have done a K18 reset where I use it for six consecutive washes and then I go back to once every three to four weeks and that's what I plan to continue to do. Okay, these next three questions are actually from my editor. She sent them over to me and was like, I just want to preface these questions with the fact that they're from my boyfriend and he's black. So I thought that it would be helpful if I included these questions in this video so that any of you who are black or have textured hair, curly, coily hair can hear my answers to these because these are definitely common questions. Number one, can people with textured hair use products targeted towards white people? Absolutely. One of the biggest takeaways I learned from a hair science course that I took last summer is that there is virtually no chemical difference between any of the hair types and textures. So whether your hair is straight, coily, wavy, or curly, there is chemically no difference between those hair types, which means that at a molecular level, there's no difference in the way that certain ingredients are going to work on certain hair types. But that doesn't mean that there won't be a variation in the way that certain hair types respond to different formulations. For example, a really, really thick, heavy product may be something that heavily weighs down extra fine straight hair, but that product may be perfect for somebody who has really thick, coarse, wavy hair or something else else that's really common is a product weighing down somebody's curls. And that of course is a completely valid reason to favor a product over another. So in testing out hair care products, you can truly test out anything that you want to. To answer this question, people with textured hair can absolutely use products that are targeted towards white people. The goal should really just be to find formulations and product textures that your hair responds well to, not to be seeking out specific ingredients that a brand has told you is going to work miraculously on your hair type. That makes me want to do an updated video on customizable hair care, like Function of Beauty, Pros, brands like that, who have all of these different hair care products marketed towards hair types, straight, wavy, curly, coily. And you'll notice that in their marketing and on the labels of those products, they will call out different ingredients for each hair type. So for example, it might say rice bran oil is in the straight hair formula and coconut oil is in the coily hair formula. But just know that again, at the molecular level, there's no difference in the way that those ingredients work on your hair. Next, she said, I'm a huge lover of silicones and so is he because we try to condition her without silicones and never again, LOL, been there. But I keep seeing that they weigh down curls slash hair, thoughts. This is something that I constantly see on social media as well. And certain formulations that do have, you know, a heavy amount of silicones may absolutely cause your curls to be weighed down. I don't want to discount that at all because I know that some people do experience that, but one of the unique benefits of certain silicone based ingredients over hair oils, like for example, Example, no. Example, coconut oil or castor oil is that silicones are specifically formulated to be lightweight on the hair and prevent weigh down. So again, this is a perfect example of where the products that you use should just be based on how they work with your hair personally and not based on the inclusion or exclusion of a group of ingredients like silicones. And the last question she asked is that, they have heard that people with his hair texture, which is 4C curls, should detangle their hair while it's wet. What are my thoughts on that? My thoughts are that that is 100% true. I have talked a lot about how it's important to detangle your hair while it's dry if you have straighter hair, but if you have curly to coily hair, the opposite is true. The reason for that is that when curly to coily hair is dry, that curl pattern is tighter and that makes it more difficult to detangle the hair because the brush or comb, I keep doing this as if I'm holding a brush or comb, that can get stuck on your curls and then that's what can lead to breakage. So straight to relatively wavy, 
brush when it's dry, curly to coily, brush when it's wet. What are my favorite blushes slash blush lighters? I'm so glad you asked this question. There have been a couple blush lighters that I have started to rave about recently, and this may be, I think it is, my second favorite type of makeup product right now behind anything lip related. You guys know how I am with lip products. I'm just obsessed with blush lighters right now because I feel like they look so, so pretty on the cheeks. They make, that was probably the most dramatic so, so. Okay, calm down. I just think that they make my cheeks look really healthy and I love the glow that they add and it's something that looks more natural than doing like a really intense stripe of highlight with a matte blush. It's just a nice all over glow and it can be super, super subtle depending on the type of product that you're using. So my current favorites are from three different brands. The one that most of you guys will already know about is one that I have talked about a bunch already. It is the House Labs Bio Radiant Gel Powder Highlighter. It's technically a highlighter, but this is in the shade Rose Quartz, and I love using it as a blush lighter. So flirty and cute. And I like to apply that the same way that I like to apply all of these blush lighters, which is by using just a regular blush brush. The other brand that I have an addiction to right now is RMS Beauty. I feel like this is such an underrated brand. I have gone crazy on purchasing products from them and they have so many amazing things. This product being one of them. So this is called the Redimension Hydra Powder Blush and I have just about every single shade. I may actually purchase the rest during this Black Friday sale because I'm crazy. So I'll show you all the ones that I have. I just, ugh, I love them so much. And the other thing I am loving about these blush lighters is that they make for gorgeous eyeshadows. So I will just take a large fluffy crease brush, put it all over my lid lightly because I'm not trying to do like dark eyeshadow, but I'll do that, use the same color as blush, and my God, it's so flattering. Okay, so for beige shades, this one right here is called Crystal Slipper. This is called Maiden's Blush. For warmer toned pinks, I have French Rosé and Pomegranate Fizz. And a cooler toned pink and obviously very cool toned plummy color. This one right here is Cur Royale and this is Hanky Panky. And I know you're probably looking at this like, girl, are you out of your mind? Have you actually put that on your cheeks? There's no way that looks good on you. But I'm telling you it does. If you swatch it like this, it it looks like an intense dark purple highlight. I'll give you that, I will. But when you apply it with a normal blush brush, start with a little bit, layer up if you'd like to. It is the most beautiful, diffused, softly glowy blush ever. The addiction is real. I'm getting myself so worked up, I wanna go buy the rest right now before Black Friday's over. Dogs. What are you guys doing? Are you a stinker? I can't play with you right now. Play with your cousin. You guys are crazy. And my last recommendation is from M Cosmetics. It is the Heaven's Glow Blush. I have three shades right now. I did used to have a fourth shade. Well, it actually would have been my first shade in this blush. I had it like a year ago and I cannot find it for the life of me. I don't know what happened to it. I'm wondering if someone got their hands on that in one of my many PR giveaways with my sisters and friends. Not meaning someone stole from me because of course they didn't, but maybe they were like, oh my God, I want this. And I was like, sure, have it. So the three shades that I do have are Baroque, Rococo in the center and Venetian Rose. These two and the more beige toned blushes from RMS have been my favorite on the eyes. They're just so beautiful and of course stunning on the cheeks as well. So I'm officially a blush lighter girly now. I cannot be bothered with a matte blush, which is a problem because I have so many. I'll still use them, but these are my favorites right now. If there are any other brands that you guys think I need to try out, let me know in the comments. I would love to. Next, do I use any scalp serums for hair thinning? Are there any that I would recommend? I'm not using anything currently, but the one that I would recommend is the Nioxin Ultimate Power Serum. The research behind the ingredients you and that serum is super exciting. I was geeking out when I was reading through it because this product actually has the ability to stimulate your olfactory receptors. And you heard that right, olfactory meaning your sense of smell. To keep it really simple, that is something that has been connected to the hair growth process. I'm going to link something below talking about a study that was conducted utilizing this ingredient, which is called Sandalore. And it was shown that this helps to improve telogen effluvium associated parameters by specifically targeting that olfactory receptor. Science is cool. The other serum I'd recommend is the Ordinary's Hair Density Serum. I did test that out a few years ago and I didn't even use it right or use it for that long for that matter, but I did notice a difference. And the ingredients used in that 
that are also very promising. So that's another one that I would recommend testing out. I know a lot of people have had great results in using that one. If there are any specific scalp serums that are marketed towards helping with hair growth that you want me to review, let me know in the comments below and I can absolutely do a video on that if you are interested. Something I have been asked so many times that I figured I may as well answer finally in round four of this video is what is my workout routine? So if you have been around since I first started posting on social media, you may know that I actually first started posting health and fitness related content because I got really, really into it right after I graduated college. And that led me to getting my personal training certification because I'm sure you guys know by now I cannot rest at like just knowing something. I have to go out and get some sort of certification in it. I love researching. I love the process of understanding how things work. So I was very into that for a while. I absolutely loved doing plyometric hip-based circuits. I loved doing Tabata workouts and weight training. I primarily trained that way for a couple of years. And then over time, I did start to burn out on the hit circuits. I would say like partway through COVID is when I kind of slowly stopped doing that. And I switched from doing hit style circuits into doing incline walking. So then for a few years after that, I was primarily doing weight training two to three times a week and walking on incline on the treadmill two times a week. And that incline walking, I was doing on incline 10 for about 45 minutes. What I will say about that is that that is the only thing that has helped me to grow a booty. Like no amount of weights ever did what incline walking did for me. And that's saying a lot because I naturally have the flattest butt of all time. But I just started getting bored of that too. I was like, I need to switch things up. Also, I feel like I've just reached a point in my life where I really wanna take care of my body and be gentler with it. I feel like I just was so rough on it for so many years with all of the hit style training I was doing, the Tabata circuits, the plyometric work, so many jump squats and just, you know, jump lunges, anything jumping and landing. I was so rough on my body. And that's definitely one of the reasons why I burnt out on it because it just like freaking hurts after a while when that's all you're doing and you're not giving yourself proper time to recover. So I was inspired to start taking Pilates. So I just signed up for a studio near me. I'm really excited to integrate that into my routine and moving forward, I plan to do that like maybe three to four times a week, add in some weight training two to three times a week. I walk almost every day for an hour. I have been doing that ever since COVID started. So that will stay consistent. I of course have to walk Elsie. And then I'll just throw in other things as I want. I feel like I'm just ready to go with the flow with my workouts more. I used to be so, so rigid with my workout routine every week, making sure I hit a certain number of days. I mean, there was a long period of time where I worked out seven days a week, like hard seven days a week, which is not sustainable and not even good for you. So I would not recommend that. But I was so rigid with that and also with the muscle groups I was hitting every week and the types of workouts I was doing every week. And I just... I don't want to do that anymore. I just want to go with the flow a little bit more. I feel like it's an area of my life that I just want to enjoy more and not be so strict with. So that's my plan. But last but not least, what is my next planned beauty procedure? Can I share everything that I have done so far? Okay, so I told you guys I got my lips done over the winter. I've gotten them touched up once since then. I'll list a video below where I talk about what I did differently because the first time I got it done, I wasn't obsessed with the results after a while. Definitely preferred how we did it the second time. When was that? The summer, I think. I haven't gotten them done in several months at this point. I don't know if I'll do it again. Like, I don't know. We'll see. I got my brows microbladed. I am still loving that. Oh my God, the difference that that has made is actually huge. I'm looking at my face like, what else did I get done? I did get a lash lift and tint once and I loved the results, but I feel like I'm too lazy to keep up with it. So I don't know that I will ever do that again. Oh yeah, my teeth. Okay, so I obviously have Invisalign in right now. That kind of counts, I guess. The two teeth next to my, what are those called? Like my main front teeth were just kind of set back a tiny bit, especially that one and it always bugged me. So I am getting Invisalign or I have it to move those teeth forward and also pull them down. I did not know that that was something Invisalign could do. If I knew that, I would have done that years ago. So I've always been bothered by how small those teeth look next to my front teeth. So the fact that Invisalign can pull my teeth down and make them longer so that they're more in line with those front teeth is everything. So I'm excited to see the results of that. And then on those two teeth that I was talking about,
about not loving, I did actually get those gums shaved up a tiny bit. I believe the official name for that is gingivectomy. So I went to a periodontist for that, got a lot of imaging x-ray work done to make sure that the amount he was bringing it up would not expose any bone or anything like that. Or wait, was it root? I don't know. I don't know dental stuff. But I did get that done a while ago now on just those two teeth next to my front teeth because the gums were quite a bit lower there. Otherwise, that's it on this face. Don't have plans to do anything else next. That doesn't mean I won't though. I'm always thinking of something. I'll like say I want to do something and my friends are like, how did that even cross your mind? And I'm telling you, this job has made me realize how people in Hollywood end up just getting obscene amounts of plastic surgery because when you're staring at your face on a screen all day long, like an actor would be doing, or me, you know, looking at videos and filming and all of that, it starts messing with you. Your face literally starts like looking different than you've ever realized it does. It's crazy. So I just say that to say, just because I'm not planning to do something right now doesn't mean I never will, but right now I'm good. All right, you guys, that is it for today's video. Those are all of the beauty secrets I wanted to reveal for part four. Let me know in the comments below if there are other questions, dogs barking, that I haven't addressed yet that you would like me to address for part five. Make sure you're following me on Instagram because that is where I will post the question box and you guys can submit questions questions you have there. And then I'll just use that to have an ongoing list that I can pull from for future videos as well. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, make sure to what? Lately, I've just been forgetting my outro in every video. I don't know what's coming up for me. Give the video a thumbs up. God. <laughs> subscribe if you haven't already. Click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. It really does help to support my channel and your support means so, so much to me. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days.